Hi, I'm Thanos. Wise men say only fools rush in, but I say today we will be rushing because our kingdom is under attack. So, let's dive into the box and see what's hiding inside. It was the age of towers. With the last of the kingdom's enemies defeated, the stalwart defenders of the realm put away their weapons of war and turned towards more peaceful endeavors. Unseen by even the mightiest of wizards, the nigh omnipotent time maze spied upon the kingdom from behind a cloak of powerful magic. As the last of the towers that had so ably defended the land were dismantled, the time maze summoned all of their arcane might and ripped a hole in the very fabric of space and time. It began as a small shimmer that grew into a gaping tear from which foes from across the ages began to emerge. Creatures of legend and lore sprang forth from the mystical rift to do battle as even more rifts tore open across the realm. Behind the swords and shields, the clever engineers and mazes of the kingdom hurried to develop towers that could stand against this new threat until this message arrived. We have harnessed the unstable space-time magics ourselves. Using this new power, the kingdom called heroes from across the ages to their defense and focused the dimensional energy into their own building materials, allowing their towers to be as mobile as their foes. General Setup Set up the tower supply area and place the damage tiles and soldier meeples for each tower class. Each player chooses a color and picks a hero and takes the hero board, hero miniature, damage tiles, one hard token and their starting towers. Place a number of hard tokens which represent the strength of the kingdom and a number of crystals next to the exit tile. Rift in time, scenario set up. Select 3 green hold cards, 4 yellow and 4 red. Take the portal cards and the path tiles needed for this scenario. Prepare the spawn stacks which represent how the hordes will spawn during the game. Create the map depending on the number of players and place the spawn tokens, the stacks and the exit tile. Put the remaining horde cards into trays and place them on the path. Then place the building sites for each player. And now you're ready to play the game. Kingdom Rush Rift in Time is a cooperative game in which you play through a campaign of progressively more difficult scenarios that follow the Time Mage's attempt to wipe out all resistance and claim the kingdom as their own. Each scenario has a unique setup with different enemies to defeat and different objectives to be completed. As the campaign evolves, new rules will be introduced and each scenario with a victory or loss conditions is played in a different way. In Kingdom Rush, hordes of enemies are emerging from strange portals and seek to destroy the kingdom. Using their towers, your heroes must defend the kingdom by destroying the enemies before they reach it and by closing all the portals. Each scenario is played over a number of rounds. In each round, you will play through six phases in the following order. Phase 1. Spawn new hordes. Starting with a spawn stack with the lowest number spawn token, flip the top hold card of each spawn stack face up. Put each hold card into an empty hold tray and place it on the path space directly in front of the spawn stack it was drawn. Phase 2. Play tower and hero cards. You will battle against the holds using your towers and heroes. You will play new towers from your hand or pass them to each other to upgrade them. Towers will deal damage in the form of damage tiles or soldiers. Each hero is activated by playing a hero card and has a unique set of abilities allowing them to defeat the holds. To win the scenarios you might have to defeat powerful bosses or destroy all portal tiles. Portals are powerful sources of magic and time energy so by attacking them can cause towers to be lost in time. To play a tower card, take it from your hand and place it on the building site that matches your player color. Each tower shows the attack range arrows and the shape of the damage style it fires. The orientation of your tower card determines the direction it fires and the orientation of the damage styles. Some towers, such as the level 1 militia tower, will generate soldier meeples rather than use damage styles. Pass tower cards. This is the only way to upgrade your towers, so pass early and pass often. To upgrade a tower card, take a tower card of the same type from the general supply that is one level higher 
and place that tower face down in the incoming tower slot of the hero board of the player you are giving it to. To activate your hero, play your hero card onto your hero board. Then you may move the hero miniature and perform an action. Then your hero may perform a basic attack, use a special ability or recover. If you choose to recover, move the hard token on your hero board back to the maximum health and flip all of your special ability tiles face up. Heroes also have unique special abilities which are divided into instant or going and protection with powerful effects. Phase 3. Destroy Hold Trays. This phase is executed in the following order. If all enemies on a hold tray have been covered by damage tiles, soldiers or heroes, remove that tray from play and gain the crystal zone on the card. Any of your heroes standing on the tray stay on the path and get 1 damage. Soldiers have a health of 1, so when damaged they are returned to the general supply. Besides attacking enemies, soldiers prevent the whole tray from advancing and can be critical to slowing the rush. If you destroy a portal and if it's the last one, then this is the last round of the game. If the kingdom is not destroyed by the end of the round, you win the game. Phase 4. Move whole trays. Holds that are not destroyed will move towards the path exit. If the tray reaches the exit, the kingdom is under attack. For each visible enemy, remove one hard token from the kingdom. The hard tokens are the kingdom's defenders. If they are defeated, the kingdom will be overrun and you will lose the game. Phase 5. Pick up tower and hero cards. Pick up all tower cards you built, all upgraded towers from your incoming tower slot and your hero card. Phase 6. Spend crystals. Crystal tokens are served among players, so you will cooperatively decide the tower cards you will purchase and who gets them. Winning at the end of the round. If at the end of the round the victory conditions described in the scenario booklet are met, players win the game. The aesthetics are really beautiful with nice up-like cartoony style. The game feels like an app laid down on the table. This up feeling is very strong while playing the game from the way the enemies approach the kingdom to the attacks that are unleashed by the towers and this puzzle mechanism that you have to cover the enemies in order to eliminate them. I really like this puzzle mechanism as it forces you to make strategic choices on how to use your towers to have the best possible results. Also another decision you will have to make is when to play a tower or pass it to another player to upgrade it and have it available and more powerful in the next rounds. Well, this was our story of Kingdom Rush Rift in Time. Until our next adventure, take care and remember, don't rush anything, when the time is right, it will happen. <laughs>